Let the sun sink good low. Cheers, Mama. Cheers. Welcome back in, everyone watching, listening to uh, North Idaho's number one podcast uh, hosted by Jeremy and Melusa. Melissa? Melissa. <laughs> I don't even know my in name. In the back of a barn. Number one. Heard it here first. I guarantee it. I'm not only your podcast partner, but your wife. Moli- what do you call me? I don't know. I fumbled your name there for a second. I apologize. <laughs> <That's> okay. <laughs> How's your week been? What's going on? It's been good. There, I've been like down this rabbit hole of news, which I think when we first moved out here, we had very little news because we were off grid. We didn't have a television. We didn't have a radio or anything like that. We just kind of ignored it. And there was bliss in that. But it w- there was also ignorance in that. So now that I've got news back, I'm like really diving into it. I'm loving these independent journalists that I'm finding on YouTube and everything because they get to the heart of those stories. So there's been some nuts stories this week, which we've been discussing. You've brought this up to me and we're going to be picking on New York City a little bit here. In a little episode. bit, yeah. So prepare yourselves ahead of time. But uh, yeah, let's tackle it. What's been going on? All right. So I heard this crazy story of this landlord that was arrested well, she wasn't a landlord. She is a homeowner. She's not a landlord. So let's just like, <laughs> she's, a, she's a homeowner. Involuntary landlord. Yeah. She's not trying to be a landlord. She was trying to be a home seller, actually. So she inherited a home in Queens that was worth like $1.3 million from her parents who had recently passed away. She shows up to the house. She's going to sell it. And her key doesn't work. She's locked out. Somebody has switched out all of the locks. She realizes that there are people living inside this home which belonged to her parents, her deceased parents. Squatters. She is now the one and only owner. She has the deed to prove it. And there was never any rental agreements or any reason why anyone should be in the home. Mm -hmm. So it kind of turns out that some guy that had been doing work on the house, or so he claims he was doing work on the house, decided, I live here now. So not only does he live there now, but he also started renting rooms out and collecting money. So, so basically what we're talking about is there there are, is a group of squatters who took over yeah, what three. was a vacated house. Well, the people had passed away. So. Right. So it was, it was empty. <laughs> yeah, it was and an they, empty they took house. Over. Right. So they just decided they were moving in because New York has these crazy laws. And it's this is not just New York. This is L.A., Seattle, Portland. I mean, you name it. Like some of these big cities, they all have these uh tenant rights but it's become squatters rights because what is a tenant that's all blurred now so it's always been very vague yeah it's always all of those places you just listed all have one common denominator (laughs) i just want to point that out real quick (laughs) they do so um probably really good food (laughs) so um yeah so she calls 911 there's people in my home i want them out And the police arrive and they say, can you guys prove that you live here? Do you have any kind of documentation proving that you have a lease or anything like that? No, we don't. Okay, well, we need to do an investigation. This is going to take quite some time. So right now, they hadn't been there. The squatters hadn't been there 30 days. Once they have been there 30 days, they have established residency and you have to take them to court and evict them. In New York, that's taking on average 20 to 24 months. To get nice. somebody evicted through the courts. Free place to stay. So if a house is vacant, you can just go in there, be really quiet for 30 days, and now all of a sudden you are legally a resident. Well, this guy isn't yet, but because the investigation is going to say take so long, the homeowner is saying, well, it's going to go into that 30 days, and then it's going to take me two years to get him out. Get him out. He doesn't belong here. We have no lease. Correct. In this same period of time, the, the squatter, the male squatter is ironically enough, also contacting the police because he is aware of his quote unquote squatter rights. Yeah, squatter rights. So he basically was like, well, that's not the way the law works. So he knows. And unfortunately he's correct. Yeah. These loopholes exist and it doesn't make it lawful. It's still unlawful. It's just a loophole around the law. It's legal. It's not necessarily moral in any way. Anyway, we have Ironically enough, as all of this is going on, as this scenario is playing out, there is a local news crew yeah, she that called, is with this yeah, lady. Yeah, she called the news like, I want this document. She tried to get their assistance in, right. in resolving this issue, correct? So why don't we go into that? But long story short, what ends up happening? What is the... So the police say that she has to leave as the owner and that they can stay until the investigation is complete. Um, 
they ended up leaving for temporarily. And she's like, forget it. She had a locksmith come in, change all the locks, which is exactly what I would have done. Yeah, that's what any normal person yeah. would have done. So she changes the locks. The guy literally barges in, calls 911 on her for unlawful eviction. And the police arrest the her, homeowner. The homeowner for trying to yes. keep essentially trespassers. Yeah. Out of her private residence. Yeah, these aren't tenants. These are trespassers. Which is so crazy. So why don't we, um, we have audio hooked up here. We're, we're going to go over this news story because, again, it just paints a better picture of how this went down. It's very short, very brief. I can pause it along the way if you'd like me to. But let's uh, let's dive in here. Arrested may surprise you. Investigative reporter Dan Krauth joins us now with more on what happened. Tell us, Dan. Okay, pause. First of all, that guy's voice. <laughs> ridiculous what is with the news anchor <laughs> hey, voice? Hey, hey. sounds like ron burgundy <laughs> this is a very big growing problem i received dozens of tips from viewers about this in just the past week i went to do what i thought was going to be a routine interview instead we capture what police and property owners are dealing with on a daily basis i have video of you on the situation yeah, but they're not uh, in the house man relax no no no, no. to understand how this Okay, so right off the bat, he's claiming it is his house. Right. And who are you people? This is the news and the police. So the guy in the stocking cap is a squatter that has now been renting out rooms. And then the poor lady with the cell phone out is the legal and rightful homeowner. Correct. Day ended. We need the police right away. With multiple 911 calls and arrests. We have to start at the beginning. Adele, the hardest question is, how do you say your name? We met Adele and Deloro outside the home her parents left her in Flushing, Queens. She's in the process of selling it. No, he loved it. But she's been locked out. She claims squatters moved in on February 6th and refused to leave. What's it like being here knowing you can't go inside of your own home? It's enraging. It really is. In New York, squatters have rights after 30 days. By the time that someone does their investigation and they do their work and their job, will be well over the 30 days, and this man will have stolen my home. And now she's back. Just after wrapping up our interview, a woman showed up. What are you doing in the house? Are you renting this house? I'm not renting. Why are you here? She unlocked the front door, saw our cameras, and took off. I think it's a pretty safe assumption that these people are not upstanding citizens by any means. Right. And we'll, as we dive into this, I want to just point out that I have a lot of prior experience with this being in law enforcement back in Washington state. This wasn't an uncommon scenario. This is something that happened on a very regular basis. Mm -hmm. It's open. Let's go in the house. It's open. Adele and her daughter with the property deed in hand went inside. This is my furniture. These are my curtains. She didn't just find her belongings inside. Like There's a man sleeping right there. Get out of my house. She found two men. How long have you lived here? I moved in about two days ago. They've called the police on me, and I've called the locksmiths. I didn't come in illegally. The door was open. Police started interviewing neighbors and looking for documents. Do you have something that shows that you've been here for more than 30 days? They took the man who told me he had been renting for two days out in handcuffs. They got one out. And escorted the other guy off the property. Now you're afraid to come out. I'm not coming out. This house is empty. This is my home. My locksmith is on the corner waiting to change my locks. And that's not fair. Totally reasonable it's reaction. It's not fair that yeah. I, as the homeowner, should be having to go through this. How are you doing? Minutes later, a locksmith showed up. But police gave her a warning before they left. I may end up in handcuffs today if this man shows up here and says that I have illegally evicted him. I said to them, let him take me to court the way I've been told to take him to court. But today, I'm not leaving my house. Less than 10 minutes after police left and the locks were changed. Barges in. The man who claims to be the one actually leasing the house shows up. Call the police again. With the other guy. Let's pause it here for a second. Under any other circumstance, she, as the owner of this home, had a right. person forcibly entered that home, as he just did. Yeah. That's a burglary. That's a felonious crime. Literally a felony that's being committed. But because of some legal loophole, yeah. the burglar gets to have the homeowner arrested. And removed. Because that makes sense. Yeah. Police took off the property. Do you see this? This guy just literally broke down my door broke through myself and my daughter to get in here. This guy just forced himself into my house. No, he did not. Yes, he did. No, he did. And he so did you. Him. You broke through the front door. Officer. The man called the police on her. So why is it that I have to leave and he doesn't have to leave? Because technically he can't be kicked out. He needs to go to court. They consider this a landlord tenant issue. And by law, it has to be handled through the housing court, not with police. If you own this house, you would not want I her inside. I don't own the house. I don't own this house. Exactly. Yes. She does. Yes. But then once again, you should know how the law works. 
I and do know how it there's, works. There's rules to the as you got to go to court and send me to civil court. He says he signed a lease in October, but wouldn't tell us with who. I got proof longer than that. Show us the proof. But who are you for me to show? I showed it to cops. Dan with Channel 7 News. If you don't want to show it, you don't want to show, show it. Proof. Come here, brother. I like that. I, I, would, I would like to see it. He didn't show me a lease. This, this is, is a bill. Is a bill for work <laughs> he says he had done to the house. He didn't show police a lease either. The police department doesn't have the lease? No. He's got no documentation. It's just bills. So Adele, you're getting arrested right I'm now? being arrested. For what? For being, in for, being in my, house, for being in my own home. And, it's not, it's not and where's home. your lease? She's fighting the house. It's not her house anymore. My deed That's is current and legal. Away. Arrested for unlawful eviction. Unlawful eviction. So let's yeah. let's analyze this situation here. Is there anybody out there who, who sees this as being just in any way? I think if there is anyone that can defend this, they're just as crazy as the people who made this law. 100%. There's, that that guy is a criminal. Yeah. And and remaining unlawfully a in a home that does not belong to him. Meanwhile, mm -hmm. like I said, the, the the owner of said home is is being arrested because of right. a law that makes absolutely zero sense. You can't be evicted when you're not a tenant. And a lot of people will try to find fault with the officers in this scenario when I get it. Uh, optics wise, it doesn't look good. But when I was saying that, you know, I had dealt with this situation many times. It was the same in Washington State where if you, I don't know the ins and outs of the actual laws that are on the books, but basically if you, even as a, a person who would be considered transient, established residency was always a term that was thrown around. If you somehow mm -hmm. managed to finagle your way into a private residence and established residency, it now required that you be formally evicted mm -hmm. in order for you to be forcibly removed, essentially, from the yeah. premises, which is crazy. Well, I mean, laws like that state, you know, those go back to the beginning of not the beginning of time, but like they go back really far. They go back into England and Scotland and Ireland and where all the people from America came over and then established residency in the same way. And it was basically, if you establish that you live in one place for long enough, undisturbed, you can now claim it, ownership of it. And that's actually true today in almost all states, even in Idaho, where let's say you're using a portion of your neighbor's land, you put a fence over it and they don't say anything for five years you can all of a sudden say, I own this now right. because I used it. And so that all started back because, you know, lands were pillaged and taken over and stolen and transferred from person to person. So it was really hard to establish who owned anything. And so there's these laws that have been in place for eons and it just makes no sense in today's society because now land isn't being stolen and taken and through wars and battles and everything in the United States. So we should not have where you can just sit your butt on a place. And if your neighbor doesn't say anything, like let's say you have a back acre of your land and your neighbor has decided to build a little house there and you didn't know they can just they claim that acre. Now they now own it. It's all just such a vague situation when you have landlord tenant agreement laws right. on the books but then you also have things like trespassing or burglary. Well, I think that during the whole 2008 crash, remember when that happened? Yeah, and it was bad. There were landlords that were being very demonized. And there were landlords that were taking advantage of the situation. People were losing their homes. A lot of people. How were um, landlords taking advantage? They were jacking up rates and doing things like that because there were. There was a high demand. There was time. a high demand. And it is, you know, it is. That's free market supply capitalism. And demand. Though, exactly. That's not, that's not taking advantage. So, yeah, but people believe that landlords were taking advantage. And so there were rent caps and things like that that were put into place. And then there were these extended laws put into place during that time. I remember in Washington, it was something that made me not want to be a landlord at the time because it was like, well, now if they can't pay their rent or their utilities then you can't just evict them. You don't. You can't evict them in 30 days. There was like this whole long process you had to go through. So there was a lot of risk on the landlords and everybody just assumes that landlords are corporations or like really rich people. Like if you're a landlord, yeah, then you're really rich. And that's not always the case. Not the case. We were landlords for a long period of time. Mm -hmm. We're just normal people who were very reliant upon receiving that rent check on a monthly yeah. basis. If we didn't receive that rent check, then we didn't, we literally didn't even have the money every month out of your paycheck to cover the rent check. We would have to go into what savings we had to pay the rent check if our tenant didn't pay. So, and that's the case for a lot of rentals. A lot of rentals are just an extra property that someone has or they inherited or that they're using for a retirement fund or something like that. 
So these loopholes in New York specifically are causing a whole bunch of issues now because we have this massive flood of illegal, illegal excuse mm -hmm. me, immigrants who are uh, being transported into New York City. And many of them are now being instructed by people like this Venezuelan TikToker yeah. to basically take advantage of uh, the, these squatter rights, so-called squatter rights. Is that your phone buzzing? Yeah. Um, he's literally going online and instructing his uh, fellow illegal immigrants, people who are literally in the act of, of committing a crime here, mm -hmm. a federal, they're violating federal law. They are now being provided for, they are being given uh debit cards and like i said there's are people like this v venezuelan tiktoker i'm not gonna say his name but uh we'll review the video in a second he's literally referring to these tactics as an invasion he's openly acknowledging the fact that hey you can come here if you have a child better yet you can take advantage of the fact that you are a parent especially if that child is born here in the u.s and turns out that if you find vacated homes you can inhabit them and basically take over them and seize them and claim them to be your own yeah, yeah. He's just, he's calling himself an immigrant influencer and he is instructing different people coming to this country how to skirt the laws, how to use loopholes. It's not even skirting the law, though. It's, I mean, it, like we've well, already pointed how to out. take advantage of the law. They're taking advantage of, you know, this This wasn't the original intent. The right. original intent, I think, at least in Washington State, the way that it was always explained to me was that they would rather see um, people be in a housed situation as opposed to telling them, hey, no, we're the government, you are to be removed. Either you're going to be you know, placed in and booked in a jail or you're going to be living out on the streets. And they thought that the, the superior alternative was to have them remaining in a domain, regardless of whether or not it was actually theirs. Yeah, well, it also doesn't, it's also not the government's house to be giving away. So I totally agree. it's totally ridiculous. I think the whole landlord-tenant disagreement it's not, it went too far in my opinion. So we have been renters and we have been a landlord yep. and landlords have to have rights too, because if you are not receiving a rent check and all of a sudden that rent falls on you, you have to pay it. There's not, you can't not pay the mortgage. You're still responsible for the mortgage as a homeowner, Correct. whether or not your tenant pays or not. How about the utilities? Same thing. The utilities are the same thing. And that's what these people in New York or LA, or it was going on in Florida and Seattle and other places where if you turned off the water or the power on the tenants that weren't paying. The tenants, quote unquote tenants. The tenants. So squatters. these could be tenants that didn't pay that like got in with a legal lease and then just didn't pay, which is very common practice. There's couples that literally, or people that literally do it their whole lives. They just take advantage. They mm -hmm. just go every two years yeah. because it takes on average two years to get them evicted in somewhere like New York City. So they will go get a legal lease and then they don't even make the first rent payment. And then it takes two years to get them out. And then they just go to the next property and the next property and the next property and yeah. just take advantage of the system. And they never pay a dime in rent. And it always comes as such a shock to people. I can remember a couple of different scenarios back when uh, I was still working, dealing with a uh, transient, one of whom had been invited into a private residence by a lady who just uh, felt bad for him and wanted to give him a place to stay for a few days. Uh, come to find out that became problematic. Um, and she called 911 requesting that we forcibly remove him from her residence. And unfortunately, I was one of the officers in that scenario, much like we just saw to where I'm having to explain to her, like, unfortunately, if he is claiming that he has now established residency here because he's been here for a few days. He has uh, visitors come here. He's got personal belongings. This is now his bedroom. Um, you're you're kind of screwed. You're going to have to file for a formal eviction through the county. You're going to have to go down to the courthouse and go through this entire long, drawn-out process. Um, yeah. She, of course, understandably, was completely baffled by that. There was another one in the same area, ironically, where another transient person had set up a tent on the... Uh, easement between the center of the roadway and the the sidewalk, the utilities, right in front of this uh, this person's house back in Southwest Washington State. So a literally a tent was set up in their front yard. This male, in the process of remaining in this location for an extended period of time, ends up defecating out in the open in this person's front yard. But because it's happening in that area that was, was there was, it was, again, it was a very gray, very abstract thing of, of, is it private property or is it more of a public space? Because it does fall within that easement. You shouldn't be able to poop in a public space either. You shouldn't. Um, <laughs> I don't understand why that makes it okay. Separate issue, separate uh, enforcement issues come along with that though. When you have uh, misdemeanor presence exceptions and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, that's getting lost in the weeds. But 
same explanation had to be provided to this homeowner, even though they provided the rebuttal of, hey, when it when it snows, I, I'm being told by the city that I am responsible for this portion of property, regardless of whether or not it's, it's actually chalked up as being a part of an easement. You guys want me to clear the area, keep it safe for passersby, people using the sidewalk, all of that. But now you're telling me that I have somebody in this same spot, same location, who's camping here illegally, arguably, and, and now defecating out in the open. And again, the explanation had provided was, unfortunately, with the way things stand, we're kind of a stalemate here. And unfortunately, you uh, there's not really, not really all that much that we can do for you. Today. Right. Sorry. That's insane. It is. Makes no sense. It's not right. It, it's not right. And it's really going to, I mean, people complain that there's not enough rental properties as is. So if you scare away all the regular landlords, the people that just own one home or two homes and they just provide, you know, a nice house at a middle class family can rent or something like that. They're not going to want to do that because they have no rights because it's a risk every time you put someone into a home or a duplex or a condo that you own because you literally have to pay the rent if they don't. And you have to pay their water bill and their sewer bill and their garbage yeah. and their power. Because if you cut off any of the utilities, Lean. you, well, you will get charged with unlawful eviction or there's other crimes. You cannot cut off somebody's utilities and if you do not pay the utility bills, the utility companies will put a lien on the property and then you would risk losing your property. So if it takes two years to get someone out in New York City, squatters move in. These are, let's say these are transients. Um, a lot of these homes are being completely trashed. They're being turned into meth houses. They're being spray painted, holes in the wall. I mean, uninhabitable. And the migrants, quote unquote migrants, the uh, illegal aliens that are here, we, we brought that up for a second. We didn't dive down that road. There was a woman this week who was also killed, unfortunately, mm -hmm. in an apartment also in New York City that she had uh, taken ownership of after her mother passed yeah, away. Yeah, her mother passed away. That was in Manhattan. It was like a 19th floor apartment worth a million dollars in Manhattan. And she decided she was going to move into it. So she's moving in over the a couple days and then security camera gets her leaving at like three o'clock in the afternoon and then at like four o'clock in the afternoon or 4 30 there's this young couple that are shown entering the building and then they never come out well then she enters the next morning at 11 never comes out and then the the couple gets exit they exit yeah. at like 12 30 or something like that and then steal her get vehicle. in her suv and take off flee they crash they're caught yeah so they are caught but She's not heard from for two days. Her son calls 911. They're taking too long. He goes to investigate himself, searches the apartment, doesn't see anything. Um, opens the coat closet on his way out, sees a duffel bag with some coats over it, pulls the coats off and sees his mother's foot sticking out of the duffel bag. She had been beaten to death. She had two broken hips, blunt force trauma to the head, a brain bleed, broken ribs. I mean, they beat her to death, shoved her in a bag and stuck her in the closet. Because and, she happened upon squatters in her house. And this is kind of the risk that you run when you have laws on the books that enable this type of behavior. Yeah. Well, if the laws are on the books, people are going to learn those laws. They're yeah. going to spread it around like this dumb TikToker. And then it's going to encourage this behavior. And you're going to run into more and more of these kind of situations of people ending up dead. It's a horribly tragic story. But even in that news uh, footage, that news story that we were watching there as she's walking around the house, that is such an unsafe thing to do. Unarmed. Yeah. And then when she's encountering, you know, just random people sleeping in back bedrooms. I was thinking it was unsafe for the news guy too. Like, oh my it's God, unsafe you for could tell there. he was staying if, if, outside if you the door. Aren't, if you don't have any, you know, formal training or experience mm -hmm. in dealing with situations like that, you know, you don't know what you're going to encounter. You don't know what you're walking into. It's, it's yeah. just insane that this is allowed to happen. Do you want to play that video of that uh, TikToker since we brought it up a couple of times? Yeah, I want to get this, that guy, out here. this guy is um, something else. Like he's almost like so enraged in all of his videos. I've kind of watched a few of them and... He's encouraging He's, migrants to, or illegal aliens to break all of these laws. And it's just really disturbing, like the, the level of like aggression with him. It's not even that he's encouraging people to break the laws. He's again, taking, telling, instructing his fellow illegal aliens to, to take advantage of right. things again that are apparently chalked up as being legal. Yeah. Like using young children and stuff. So he has a toddler daughter who I guess CPS is kind of investigating that now, but um, he's basically saying, like, if you have a, a young child, then you can get across the border quicker. If you have a young child, you can get into housing. If you're in New York and you have a child, you are now eligible for those 
debit cards, those prepaid debit cards or credit cards, whatever they're calling. I think they're, they're all prepaid getting MasterCards. 12 or $13 per day per person. So if you were a family of six like ours, I can't do the math, idiot math here real quick, but it's a lot of money. Yeah, it's a lot. And this is all prepaid taxpayer credit cards. Um, the program, the pilot program, just to see if these credit cards work and then they're going to expand the program. And I'm sure they'll pat themselves on the back and then expand this this well, it's amazing program. that, uh, you know, the mayor of New York City and, and a lot of people in New York City are saying that this is going to kill the city. This is this is unsustainable. They spent one point three billion dollars last year dealing with this migrant issue. And this is all taxpayer dollars. Well, just the credit cards, just the pilot program is fifty three million dollars. And I was thinking, man, who could use fifty three million dollars in um, in assistance and credit cards and food assistance and housing assistance. Oh yeah, maybe our, the Maui fire victims. Maui victims. Maybe um, our own People citizens. who are here legally, who aren't actively breaking the law as every single one of these people are. Do you wanna cue that video up? Let's let's play that and just, oh, yeah, just to, to give an example of exactly how aggressive and militant this guy is being. It's, it's infuriating. una casa en Junei State. Ya que me enteré que existe una ley que dice que si una casa no está habitada podemos expropiarla. Sí, sí, I love the Capiche. language too. Muchachos, aquí en Junei State también se aplica la de invasión de terreno. Y creo que ese será invasion. mi próximo negocio. Invadir casas abandonadas. Ya que me he buscado unos códigos con mis amigos africanos y me dijeron que ya llevan como siete casas. Okay, so you get the idea. Anyway, all his videos are like this and like the ones talking about like using small children. And then the first thing that pops into my head is as if we don't already have a child trafficking problem in this country. And now we have people like this guy telling people, hey, if you can get a young child, you can get across the border. You can get better transportation. You can maybe get on one of those airplanes where they're flying in by the hundreds of thousands illegal <laughs> immigrants. Tex Texas is busting them in all over the place to yeah. a lot of the um, the cities like New York, uh, D.C., Chicago, and Denver. They're filling passenger airplanes, flying them over the border. So not only are these people not supposed to be coming through, but they are. we're now flying them in. Like I'm We're facilitating it. And again, it's all on the taxpayers' then. Yeah, and We're then paying for you, our own demise. you have to care for them. You have to house them. You have to feed them. You have to pay for their medical. And then everyone's wondering why an ambulance ride costs eight thousand dollars when you need an ambulance ride or something like that as a citizen. And it just, I guess, what really makes me mad is like when the tragedy in Maui happened. What were they given? Seven hundred dollars? Eight, eight fifty, something like that. I'm not super. That is well -versed so. On the exact laughable and i mean insulting not, it's so awful it's beyond insulting it's so horrible and and these are citizens of our country yeah i think ever since um i think the state of hawaii is stepping up now and they're trying to divvy up for for actual uh fatality victims of the fire the, those families are getting a little additional too little money, too late but it does it doesn't where matter. have they been all of this time what have these poor people been able you know been doing how have they been able to care for themselves and everything they lost everything in our own country, our own citizens, and we're giving $53 million in credit cards. Yeah, point being, why are we taking care of people who are here illegally, who are actively breaking the law, and now we're using U.S. tax dollars to yeah, these take are, care of them? These are criminals. It's, it's, it's insane. It if, makes absolutely zero sense. What is going on? The act of them being here is criminal, so why are we facilitating, why are we bringing them in? Because people are like, oh, well, they're going to drown trying to cross the river and everything. And while that is horrible and tragic... It's Nobody's a, putting them in the river. It's a choice. Yes. Yeah. And that is not an excuse to say, well, we don't want that to happen. Therefore, let's just bust them in. Here's my bigger gripe with it is that it's just a, a flat out national security issue. You don't just have people coming from uh, Central American and South American countries. You have people coming in mm -hmm. from all over the world. There, yeah. there was a recent video of a group of, I think, Syrian uh, self-proclaimed refugees who are seeking asylum here and were crossing the southern border of the U.S. dressed in 5.11 tactical gear. And if you're not familiar with what that is, basically 5.11 is a it's a uh, clothing brand. They come up with a, a variety of products, but it's all based around like a lot of cops wear it and stuff, a lot of military personnel wear it because it's all based around tactics. So nobody's concerned with this. There are a lot of Chinese uh, folks that are coming over, uh, people who 
we we have a tendency to think of as, as not being uh, a friendly toward the U.S. in any way. And we're just allowing them to cross the border. It's crazy. Well, I think like a really big concern for me, too, is the amount of children crossing the border. And I mean, now, like the current administration said that um, the DNA tests were racist. And I just that just makes my head spin because Wait, what? Say that, again? that DNA tests were racist at the border. So previously under past administrations, not just Trump, but under Obama as well, and I believe under Bush, they were doing um, DNA tests. So if you were coming across the border and they weren't doing them on everybody, if you look like a family, you know, like if we were crossing the border, we probably would not get stopped and have a DNA test done on our children because our kids look like us and there's a mom, and there's a dad and there's kids. Beautiful. And the kids don't look under, you know, distress or anything like that. But there were situations that were sketchy. So in a situation where border patrol agents went, this looks weird. Why is there a two-week-old baby girl and no mom and a 19-year-old guy has her? Yeah, it's oh suspicious. God. It does not Nevea. add up. This is Dang like- it, Navea. <laughs> Sorry about that. This is real life. That was uh, Nevea, our daughter. Calling our, yeah, Nevea and Kaimani are home. at a friend's house. And apparently Kaimani was not like leaving the game that they were playing. And now they're anyway, 15 minutes late. So. DNA testing. Continue. DNA testing. So previously, if something looks suspicious, like I was just saying, like a, a baby, no mom, and like a 19-year-old mm-hmm. that was claiming to be the dad or right. something, or um, a guy that had like eight kids no mom and you know suspicious stuff where it's like what's going on here Mm -hmm. they were able to pull them aside and do a dna test now there was a lot of misinformation going around about these dna tests that they were separating Separating families families. we all heard it the babies were stuck in cages you know like all this stuff was going around and so they were like look at how horrible and racist these dna tests are the dna tests were rapid tests they take about 45 minutes to an hour and a half if you do not have 45 minutes to an hour and a half to prove that you are the father, because it was mostly, it was like 90% or 95% were, we're single not. men coming across with children. Yeah, that's not suspicious It was suspicious. All. So that was like 95% of the tests. If you do not have 45 minutes to take a rapid DNA test and prove that these are your children that you are entering the country with, then stay on your side. Like you don't need to be coming in if you can't be bothered to take a test. It's not racist. It's protecting these children. So now the... Horrible racist DNA tests have been done away with. They no longer exist. So now if a border patrol agent sees a string of 20 children with one young man and they're saying, oh, yeah, 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 we got homes for them or whatever, they're coming across the border with phone numbers written on their forearms. And what, what is that about? The four, the phone numbers are, according to some of the border patrol agents, are like, some of these kids, you'll have eight kids, they'll say, oh, this is their parents' number. The parents went ahead of them. Mm-hmm. First of all, BS. And, but this is their parents' number, but there'll be eight, nine, 10 kids with the same phone number, right. same ages. How are these kids siblings or not siblings? These, these kids are being trafficked. So now we are facilitating the trafficking of minor children, of these poor, poor children being taken from their countries, whether or not their parents sold them, because a lot of parents in desperate states are selling their kids. Um, a lot of these kids are being kidnapped and then they're they're being used to get across the border because like this guy has instructed people if you have a three-year-old and this is my daughter she gets abused all the way across i mean these kids are being used and abused they found one little girl that was like nine years old and she had the dna of 56 men in her lovely and so these kids now are there is no lines of protection because the border patrol can no longer say this is not her dad this is not her uncle. This is She is unrelated to this person that claimed to be her family member. We're seizing this child. We're going to find her rightful parents. There were a lot of kids that were placed back with their parents that had been kidnapped. A few months ago now, Melissa and I started using an online service called Delete Me in hopes of getting some of our personal information removed from the internet. In that time, we've been so impressed not only with how much Delete Me has been able to find, but also removed from the internet on our behalf. We learned that there are data brokers out there collecting huge amounts of your personal identifiable information. They will use government sites, public information sites, and even your own social media. They will collect your birth date, your social security number, your past addresses, and even your family members. They will then create a profile on you, license it, and sell it to other data brokers, companies, and sadly, even scammers. Yeah, believe it or not, our daughter Nevaeh, when she was only six months old, she had her identity stolen from some scammer who was even claiming her as a dependent on his taxes. Yeah, it was a total nightmare. And then the burden of proof to actually prove that she was our child 
child to the federal government was 100% on us. It was a really long process. And through that, we also discovered that there were two separate credit cards opened with her name. So it can happen so quickly and you could have no idea until you have a massive mess on your hands. In just the last six months, Delete Me found over 100 different data brokers with our personal information and their privacy experts took it from there. They've removed over 500 listings with our personal data. And the best part is they'll continue to scan the web, making sure our info doesn't pop up again. Yeah, we mentioned to you previously, Melissa and I actually signed up for a family plan under Delete Me. That way all of our loved ones are protected under one convenient plan. This can be so important when it comes to some of our elderly family members, because unfortunately they are so oftentimes a target of these scammers and identity thieves. To give Delete Me a try for yourself and take those first steps towards protecting your personal information online, just go to joindeleteme.com slash GSL or click the link below and use our code GSL to get 20% off all consumer plans. Big thanks to Delete Me for sponsoring this episode of the podcast. Now let's get back to our conversation. And it's just, it's so maddening. And so now we just have these little kids pouring into our country, being put at these homes and the border patrol knows what's going on and there is nothing they can do about it. It's just amazing to me that we just have this open free for all when it's a matter of national security. There was another video that came out, an undercover video that was taken from the uh, Roosevelt Hotel uh, where many mm -hmm. families are being housed in New York City. Mm -hmm. This guy sneaks in and starts roaming around with his cell phone camera going. And we always have this characterization of the people coming here as asylum seekers who are coming from horrible, horrific situations. And I'm sure that that is a certain percentage of the people who are trying to make their way here. However, again, you you are able to treat it as a loophole when it, it becomes just this open border policy of like, hey, come here, we'll take care of you. Here's some money. Here's a place to stay. Here's a phone. Here's whatever else it is that you need. Um, there in, in that video footage, what was shown is that there were a bunch of males, again, with very, um, I would describe it as a very like tactical militant presence about them who were all on brand new iPhones communicating with God knows who on whatever social media platform it is that they were utilizing, dressed in very, very nice clothing, nicer clothes than I wear. These aren't people who are in need. I, I'm, I'm fully in support of helping people who are, are seeking a better life, life for themselves. Obviously, ideally, they'd be going about it in right. the, the proper way. Uh, in the way that it's always been gone about in the proper way yes right. um however i just think that what has happened is it like i said it's just become free for all we have people who wish to do us harm from other parts of the world who are now taking advantage and making their way into our country and are freely roaming around it's, right it should be something that makes us all a little uneasy it should make you extremely uneasy and i mean this is this is a border crisis this is an invasion that we have going on in our country. Completely. And the, it's not like, I don't believe people should be able to come here. Of course I do. I am a first generation American. We all are. My father came here when he was 19 years old. And, you know, so yeah. I Not all of us are first generation, but, um, you know, we're all here yeah. because uh, those who came before us and our families came from somebody else seeking out a better life and yeah. contributing. I think part of the problem now is that you have all these folks coming here and they're serving as a drain. This is unsustainable. It it's 100% unsustainable, which it's, which leads to questions about why it's happening in the first place, because it seems like you have these political entities who are actually facilitating it and, and enabling it and encouraging it. In fact, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. It almost seems as though they are they have trying to usher in the demise of our country as we know it. And, well, and I almost wonder if it's not short-sighted too, because it's like, well, do they want like a total demise of the country or are they literally just thinking about November? And, I have no idea. and like nothing else matters but November. It's going to be really interesting to see what happens though, based on, you know, all this going on, because I think the well, overwhelming majority yeah. of Americans are concerned about it as they should be. Yeah, no, they did a poll and it was like 80% of Americans believe that we have a border crisis. So this is both sides of the aisle. This is not a Republican Democrat issue. This is everybody being concerned. And I think if when you live in places like New York, where you're seeing it, you're seeing your rights stripped away, you're seeing the homeless population grow, you're seeing people that Crime have- Crime on the rise, like crazy, oh, shooting, stabbings, fights so, on a consistent basis on the New York City yeah. subway, and on the streets. Yeah, and you're watching the police do less and less and less because they're being instructed. Not by choice. Yeah, they're by, being instructed through, through not to. policy and politics. Right. So when you see that, now all of a sudden you have people getting upset and then saying, well, I'm going to take things into my own hands, which isn't good either. No. So you end up with the vigilantes where they're... Uh, Take either choking out people on the subway, they're killing, like they're, they're <laughs> killing people. Like this situation where this lady was arrested in New York, I don't know if it was that night or like a couple nights later or something, but it was within a few days of her being arrested. 
there were a few vigilantes that decided to visit the guy. Is it people who kn- knew her personally? I don't know. So I don't what, know what if they knew her. There? I mean, it was almost like mob style. So mm. I don't know what they said, but they, they went in at night. And the next morning, the two people that said they weren't leaving were gone. And the only person that said he's staying is that guy. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't know. Maybe he's brave because I'm assuming those guys are going to be back. Because like the way that it used to be in New York was like mob style. Remember when the, like the mob like took over New York and like none of this would have been happening. I'm not advocating for the mob to come back to New York or anything. <laughs> you heard her. They Bring got back good, the mob. They got good food. And we need the Al Capone. No. So yeah, there was like total. They provided. Security. They considered. They provided security yeah. to the people, and it was totally Again, not advocating. Totally for lawless. It was not good. It caused like massive problems. But like basically, that's going to come back if the lawmakers don't start doing things because people are not going to sit by idly and just allow their city to fall apart and allow their uh. property rights to be stripped and their safety to be stripped. Eventually, people, groups. I think it's going to become groups are going to rise up. Like the Batman. (laughs) If they're going to treat this like Gotham City, we're going to be the Batman. The Batman, for example. Yeah. And I'm not I'm not in favor of that. Me either. That's a disaster. But I say that as somebody who always points out that I'm not one to just stand by when I see wrongdoing. (laughs) Are you going to become the Batman? No, I'm not saying that. But, you know, I think you reach a tipping point with any of these situations to where, like I said, there, there's, there are always going to be people who are unwilling to stand by idle to watch somebody be treated yeah, um, unfairly. People are starting to step in like on the subways and stuff, yeah. but they're, they're starting to like overstep in. So like somebody's being well, drunk it, it and can belligerent. It more issues. Yeah. When yeah, it can. Lack, because, lack of training, lack mm-hmm. of, lack of uh, legal authority. It becomes a problem. It becomes a problem, but people have had it. So now people are starting to become these vigilantes. You can't have people going into these homes in the middle of the night and busting people's kneecaps. <laughs> that's like that's the way the mob would do it. Like, so what do you think the ideal solution is? Because I don't have the answer. We're, we're, we're here ranting and raving and, uh, I just think I'm, that the I'm, laws need to be the, they, so, well, they're trying to solve it. So Florida passed a law just like two days ago defining what a tenant is because the yeah, whole landlord tenant thing like landlords need to have rights tenants need to have rights tenants definitely are starting to get more rights and you know that's a whole other issue but they're not tenants again this is the right. problem so you need to have a set definition what is a tenant? legal definitions are incredibly important and when you just chalk up a, a tenant as being somebody who just goes i live Hi, now i'm a tenant that's yeah. not good enough there, right. there needs to be a set criteria there so florida is they passed a law, what is a tenant? Basically, you have to have a legal lease and it has to be binding on the, they have to know that you're there. And all. Otherwise, you're not a tenant, you're a trespasser. Thank God. Yes. Thank you, Florida, for some common sense. So now New York is trying to do the same thing. Well, there's a couple lawmakers in New York trying to follow suit, do the same thing, define what is a tenant and give back these property owners some rights um, so that the squatters cannot live for two years. And why the heck is it taking two years to get a squatter out of your house? What is wrong with the court system? It's so, bogged down. That's, it's, that's what the problem is. This is it's, ridiculous. It's a civil issue and uh, we are overwhelmed right now. And when I asked you, it, what, you know, I don't know, going back a few minutes, why why it is that this is happening or why it is that it seems like there are just political entities that are facilitating this. I think that's part of the, the design. I think that's part of the, the grand plan is to just yeah. bog our, our legal systems down. I mean, I, I know it is. It's uh, You can find obscure video clips of of some of these politicians basically acknowledging it. It's, it's, it's like all a part of the plan. Yeah, to create chaos within, to take over our systems. To, well, they're not going to like it when it comes knocking on their door. And that is what's going to happen for these people true. living in New York and in D.C. Ask, and in L.A. Uh, ask like Pelosi's husband. Yeah. Remember that whole situation <laughs> where the transient guy there in California stuck into his residence and bashed him in the head with a hammer? Mm-hmm. Horrible thing to have happen, but all the irony. Yeah, yeah. So... Yeah. So anyway, in New York, they are trying to pass a what is a tenant definition, basically, to give back some. Are they redoing the landlord tenant agreement? They are just. No, they're just defining what is a tenant. So if you so it doesn't protect you in the case of you let a tenant move in and then they have a million and one excuses why they can't pay the rent and they don't pay the rent. Now you're on the hook for the rent, the water, the power, everything Mm -hmm. or your property gets leaned and could be foreclosed on. Mm -hmm because it takes two years to get them out, it does not protect you in that case. Uh, it only protects you if it's a squatter. So if it's someone that you do not have a legal lease with. 
So I say the law doesn't go far enough, but I don't even know that this law is going to pass because it's being faced with a bunch of adversity. There's a lot of people arguing for it or arguing against it to try to make sure that it does not become law and that squatters remain with these rights. And I do not see an argument for that. I'm just so tired of the lawlessness. It's, and it's all so ass backward. I don't care whether or not something, again, is quote unquote legal. There's right and wrong. It's just the way that it is. I could kind of picture you being the Batman. Like I could see no, New York no calling you Batman, with like a big me. giant bacon maple thing in the sky. And then I got like, out of I'm law enforcement <laughs> because I was, I was tired of a lot of these types of situations. You have to realize that their hands are tired are, you know, the, the, the hands of the officers in these situations are so oftentimes tied. And there were a number of occasions when I can recall, you know, not, uh, we have mandatory arrest situations where you're having to arrest people that I didn't feel necessarily needed to be arrested. You have situations like landlord tenant agreements to where, you know, when things get ugly, you have to either chalk it up as being a civil issue and, and kind of err on the side of caution by chalking it up as a civil issue, as opposed to taking any kind of criminal enforcement action. Uh, the fact that New York state even has a, a law on the books, um, referring to, these types of situations as Waters, unlawful right? evictions yeah, yeah, unlawful is crazy eviction. to me. At the, well, at the very least, at least um, in Washington state, it seemed like it, it was the better option to just say, hey, this is a landlord tenant agreement, landlord tenant issue. Yeah. This is something that needs to be presented to a judge rather than right. a, that an was, officer on scene. That was never a law in Washington, unlawful evictions, but it was. Not to my knowledge, no. Yeah. So unlawful evictions. I mean, I guess it was because, I mean, back in the day, in the sixties and seventies, like a landlord could literally like just go in in the middle of the night and say, pack your stuff and leave. Like you've seen it in, in movies and television shows. And then families would just be out on their butts, nowhere to go, middle of the night evictions. And so they made laws where landlords could not do that. But I like the whole 30 day thing. I think you should be able to evict anyone that hasn't paid in 30 days or, or make it 60 days. If you want to be, you know, more fair, if you want to lean on the side of like, hey, people lose their jobs and stuff. 60 days is long enough to find alternate housing and things like that. But it is not fair to to make it go on for two years. It's just not because as somebody who was a landlord and as somebody who was a renter, I just, it doesn't make sense that somebody can occupy someone's residency and be, and then the, the person who owns the property be obligated to care for every need of that person it's just it's not fair it's like this whole babysitting nanny thing and and no one's going to want to be a landlord and then we're not going to have rentals yeah. but maybe the government doesn't want that like there is a there is a big not to get all conspiracy i was gonna theory, say how deep you want to go down the conspiracy but there's, hole. yeah i mean i mean if you can attack private property rights if there are no private property rights everything else kind of falls apart private property rights are incredibly important and if nobody owns anything and nobody wants to own anything, well, now all the rentals are government owned, mm -hmm. government subsidized, and they have total control and power. So I don't know. Maybe that is the plan. Or corporations. Ooh, like those, I need my. Those corporations. I need my Hershey everything. Kiss tinfoil hat. It, it's uh, BlackRock. Look at all the property that BlackRock mm -hmm. is BlackRock is buying up. Yeah. And and I mean the only reasonable explanation would be again it's it's a matter of control. Right? Yeah. We own everything. You now uh, bow to us. Yeah. So this whole, so Texas tried to put up, I mean, what was that, like a month ago, six weeks ago, and yeah. they tried to put up the the fencing and then they got ordered to take it down and it was like a whole thing. Texas is trying to protect their own borders. And actually, according to federal law, they have the right to do so in the case of an invasion. I would say what I saw two days ago would constitute an invasion we've got one more video clip here this is of a group of illegal aliens who are forcing their way through uh barricades set up by the national guard i believe down in texas right and i would like to point out that i don't see any families in this group these look no like families. men under 30 not only no families Military but watch the guys men. down on the bottom left hand side of the screen when they start pulling at this fence they are i believe they are like masked up um so who knows who the, these guys are they actually make their way past a couple of the agents but then there's a secondary fence and I find this entire Jeez, are video. Are there only three agents out there? This video is terrifying. So mm -hmm. this is the Texas National Guard who has been ordered not to fire upon these people or anything. Um, so there's really nothing they can do. No, it's a mob. They're totally outnumbered. It's, it's a mob. And trust me, as somebody who has been there, not on the southern border, not with a group of illegal aliens, but um, in very similar circumstances, this is not a good feeling. When you are outnumbered and nobody is obeying any of the commands or instruction that has been given to them and you are armed it makes for a very intense uneasy situation so let's uh, take a look at this
I mean, how many people is that? Notice the hands up. Yep, they're putting their hands up so that they cannot be fired upon. Hands up. We're not a threat, even mm -hmm. though there's, what, 50 of us here and three fences. of you, and we're actively trying to break into your country. We are not a threat, so don't use force yep, against Yep, they're putting us. their hands up in the case that they do open fire on them. They can say they shot these poor men with their hands in the air. They know the deal. Yep. Done. Yep. Jesus. I mean, it looks like a movie. That That's an invasion. These are criminals that are illegally trying to invade the country. You're not trying to enter as a asylum seeker or a what's the dream one title a dreamer yeah you're that's not a dreamer these are military age men invading the country pushing past our national guard knocking them to the ground and invading our country and, because of political... and are these people now in our country did they let them in i bet they did i, I have no they probably idea. gave them those credit cards i don't know what happened i think there was a secondary response and they had a lot of people that were that were sent i don't i don't where's know. the army this is this is like literally like if this were happening in Canada or try doing that in Australia, you know, try knocking down the border over just there. Flinging Vegemite at you. I'm, <laughs> I just literally try, <laughs> like try doing that in China. Try entering China in that way That's and what see what would happen to you. And try entering Russia. Try entering the Ukraine. This is insanity that we are allowing this to happen. And the Texas National Guard has no authority to protect the border. Like they can stand there and they can be tough and they can yell at them. And it enclosed the gate, but that's all that they ha are allowed to do. So basically, when they're completely outnumbered, they're just being run over. This is so dangerous, and it's crazy. I like I literally don't understand it. Like when I saw that, I'm like, it's politics. I don't know what the rules of engagement are down there um, with situations like that again. But it's 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 crazy to see. But it's I crazy to see. This there's, is why there I should love, be more that's being done. Yeah, but this is why I love the independent journalism that's coming out on like YouTube and things yeah. like that because it's so nice to see people go down there and actually tell the full story because I actually first saw the story on CNN mm -hmm. and it was like an article that popped up and the CNN title was, don't quote me on this, but it was something like immigrants rush portion of border fence. They use the word rush. I'm surprised they use rushed. the word rushed. But I mean, you can rush Should at a approached. concert. Approached is a softer <laughs> word. You know what I mean? Well, I think they didn't want to get like totally criticized for like, but they minimized it so much. Immigrants rush portion of border fence. It's like the Doesn't, mostly peaceful protests that they were yeah. having after George Floyd. <laughs> yeah, just like those mostly peaceful Same protests. Thing. But it's like, okay, it wasn't a fence that was rushed. It was our National Guard. It wasn't a portion of the fence. They ripped the fence down and then went running over our National Guard. Like this By is By the way, that fence is our our nation's border. It's not yeah. just the fence. <laughs> yeah, it's not like someone someone's garden fence. And these are not immigrants, these are illegal invaders. It's they're very different. How dare you than people them. standing in line with their documentation, entering the country in the way that my grandmother did, the way that my father did. That is an awful thing you just said right now. I don't care. That is horrible. My hate family speech, had and to I will come. Not stand for it. My family had to you stop that. My <laughs> family had to come and do it legally and come here and start businesses and establish legal residences that they owned and and got mortgages for from the bank and then paid for. Like it's so frustrating and it's so insulting to the people that have done it legally. I have an aunt from Columbia. We have yeah. a friend from Columbia. They had yep. to come here. They had to take the test. It took years. It cost money, but they did it right and they were proud to do so and they're happy to be here. And that is what is required to come here and become a citizen. And it is the same case in any country. So why should America be expected to just open its borders and then pay for everyone coming in. And when you have people like that, it's so dangerous. Wow, I didn't realize you were so full of hate. I had no idea. <laughs> Stop it. I had no idea. I'm not. I just think that it's really, really important that people do things lawfully and organized because otherwise you just have chaos. You don't know who's coming here. Because it's the law. Well, there was another situation, which like you can look this up. It was so horrible. So they found these, they were... <laughs> They were immigrants. I don't even know. So they had come over 
And in Mexico, they were like really bad guys, like really, really bad working for the cartel, like the kind of people that would like where you just find heads and stuff like that. Muy so mal. they Muy go mal. into this house that they have established residency in, right? Not their house or anything like that. They find body parts, like blood sprayed on the wall. I mean, like out of a horror movie, they arrest these people and then decide that they're not going to hold them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they're back I mean, out in our country and it's like they are dismembering people and but like i don't know that it was american citizens it's like they kind of are carrying on some of like if you get people that are like cartel people where there are some whole horrific things that happen so you have to know who's entering because if you have horrible murderers entering the country or people bringing over pounds of fentanyl that are killing people on the streets i mean you have to know who's entering and what they're coming with and whose children they have and what's happening to these children once they get here. There are so many people who would argue that point with you, though, like the people who are saying, why build a wall? Look, look at how easy they're able to to penetrate this wall. Why put up a wall? And I told you every time I hear that argument, I'm just like, what are you talking about? Do you lock your doors when you go to bed at night? Do you lock your car when you park it in town? Why? It's also yeah, it easily defeatable. I can just bust through your door. I can break your window to your car, get right. into your car. No problem. Like what? You you should make it as difficult as possible. Nothing is impenetrable. Like it, it's right. it's all defeatable. Well, but it doesn't North mean Korea you, you just hard to get usher. Into. <laughs> it doesn't mean you just usher people in. Here you go, open right. door policy. It, it's, it's really hard to keep them out. So let's just let everybody in without knowing who they are. It's such a stupid argument. Yeah. Like if you're a felon or a murderer or a known cartel member, then mm. these are people in the in the act of committing a crime. Yeah. If you're trafficking children, mm -mm. if you're entering our country illegally, you are committing a crime. Yeah. You're not an asylum seeker. Right. Like, like was pointed out to AOC in that congressional hearing. I love that clip. If you're seeking asylum, you you do it the legal way. You you check in at a, at a port of entry Mm -hmm. on the border. You don't sneak across. Yeah. There are, there are methods to get into this country legally. They are available to you. And there's a complete lack of accountability if you do sneak in once you're in. It's, it's a, mm-hmm. again, it's a free-for-all. Yeah. At, at our expense, the, the citizens of our country, both financially and there are many examples now. Yeah, why now wouldn't you of, come here? Many examples now of people who have been the victim of, uh, of crimes or awful, horrible, very tragic circumstances yeah. at the hands of people who had no business being here in the first place. Well, I just hope that our lawmakers step up or that something happens or that there's some kind of a change because if not, what we're going to see is more lawlessness on the part of American citizens as well. What's the likelihood of that happening? What do you think is going to happen? You, you referenced the election year. It is an election year. There's there's a lot that's been going on politically. Um, I don't know. What's, what's I think it's going to get ugly. You know, make a bold prediction here in uh, March of 2024. No, I have no idea. I mean, I really, really have no idea the way it's going to go. And I think it's going to get really ugly no matter what happens. We have two highly polarized candidates that uh, a lot of people hate on both sides. There's, I've never seen two more hated candidates <laughs> that are running against each other. I think no matter what, there's going to be fireworks. And it's just, it's really frustrating to watch our country be tore apart this way. But I think that there's enough people that have just had it and... Um, I just, I'm afraid to watch citizens rise up in their own gangs. You know what I mean? Do you think that the solution will come about from the election result? Like, let's say Trump wins. Do you think that he manages to correct this issue? I think that he would definitely go towards the border issue first and start going after that. Um, I don't know if, I don't know if he can win. I don't know if they'll let him win. Uh, <laughs> Easy. No, but I Easy. mean, just with all the legal stuff going on and the property seizures, and then like I heard rumor that like even Over. if he won, they were going to deem him unfit to like in <laughs> in Congress. I mean, like unfit in what way? I, I don't know. I love it. Oh so we live in ass but then land. yeah, like that's kind of crazy. But I mean, even just the government going after like a political opponent. Remember when you weren't allowed to do that? You weren't allowed to go after your political opponent. Um, so like this whole thing has been so weird. And then like with Biden, if he wins, I think there's going to be a lot of people really upset about that because people think like if he gets another four years, the country's over. Um, so I could see that going really, really bad. Um, I just I don't think it matters who wins. I think it's it could go bad either way or people just talk a bunch of crap online and then nothing really happens and it's status quo. And But I mean, we have a massive inflation problem. We have a massive border crisis going on. We have, um, there's just fires starting all over the world. 
and there's money being pumped out of our country to support all of these different Mm -hmm. wars that, I mean, I don't really think that we should have any part of it all. I'm definitely more of a libertarian, like, let's keep our funds here. We've got people in Hawaii that we need to be taken care of. We have homeless on the street that we need to be taken care of. We have a... um, opioid epidemic. We have a fentanyl epidemic. We have people that need help. We have veterans that are on the streets that need good veteran care. I mean, our VA hospitals are a mess. There's so many things that need to be taken care of here in America. And yet we're policing all over the world and we're putting our resources in our and our military elsewhere. Meanwhile, we have an invasion at our own border. Like how about we bring our guys home and we put them at our own border and make sure that 25 year old military guys from Libya aren't ripping down our fences. So- I don't know. That's my rant for the night. <laughs> you, you asked. <laughs> Preaching to the choir. Here. So, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it just drives me crazy. I swear. You know what? I think that we need to go back to just getting rid of the TV. Because it'll drive you crazy. It really will. Uh, there's so much that comes out um, through the media, through, and I guess, I don't, you want to talk, you want to put us in that category? Are we a part of the problem here by, by ranting the way that we're ranting? I don't know. I mean, I think that it's stuff that everyone discusses in their home. It's stuff yeah. that we've been discussing all week. I mean, we've been finding these videos and going, oh my gosh, watch this. Yeah. And our kids have been seeing it and going, oh my gosh, like what's going on? Yeah, it's happening. I yeah. mean, but like you said, you know, ignorance is bliss and uh, you can remain blissful or you can get real about the things that are happening in yeah. our world. And, you know, there have been a lot of people in the topics that we've tackled here, especially on the podcast that have been upset by um, a lot of the subject matter and you know that's fine it's uh, yeah. completely subjective and if you choose to refrain from it so be it but uh yeah for us i think it's good just to have at least some sense of of what's happening and uh the realities of our world it's it's so important yeah i think it's important and i think that it, these things matter to people and these things are affecting real people and there's a lot of unfair things there's a lot of dangerous things there's a lot of people being hurt um, and if you are frustrated by biting your tongue and saying nothing and turning a blind eye, it does nothing. It accomplishes nothing. No, it doesn't. So, I mean, it's kind of the the loud tyrants, the, the loud tyrant minority yeah, the, that the, the, yeah. if you allow them to just continue because it's like, well, be nice, be a nice mm-hmm. little Christian and just, you know, don't say anything. Don't ruffle feathers. Don't offend. Don't, why things are so bad. This is why things just continue on because- yep. They aren't going to be quiet and they are going to rise up and they are going to take over our schools and our governments. And and then you wonder what the heck happened and why do we have no rights and why do we have no say? And it's like, well, <laughs> because you just sat there and let it happen. Yeah. So yeah, I don't, I don't know that it's the time to be quiet. And I think that a lot of people in New York, um, rightfully so, people in LA, rightfully so, that are paying taxes out the, you know, it, 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 wazoo yes that's the <laughs> word that was the word i was looking for you're welcome they are paying taxes out the and then they're watching i mean they're paying so many taxes for these homeless epidemics and these homeless programs and everything and they're watching the problem get worse and sadder and more dire and they can't even walk down the street in these expensive neighborhoods they we live are in funding our own demise <laughs> literally that's think about so it dire. we are paying for our own demise yeah, I mean, putting in bathrooms in San Francisco or in LA for the homeless is not helping. All that's happening is they're going in these bathrooms and they're finding a bunch of needles in the bathroom. They're using the bathrooms to shoot up. Like that that's not helping homelessness. Like we need mental health programs. We need um, better housing programs for people that are actually going to be looking for jobs. We need job programs we for the homeless. Ultimatums. Yes, we, we need, need we need tougher laws. We need to recriminalize drug use. Because these people need help. And by decriminalizing it, you enable them. And when you have a naughty child, do you enable them to continue doing naughty things? Or do you love them in a hard way? Like, do you love them and correct them so that they can fix their lives, so that they have hope? Because there is no hope in living on the streets and enabling them and giving them clean needles and telling them that everything they're doing is fine and allowing them to kill themselves by overdosing. Or by just giving everyone, what's that overdose, um, Narcan. Narcan, By putting, they're telling everybody, teenagers, like I saw this, it was a commercial that came on when our kids were watching a YouTube channel, that teenagers should be carrying Narcan in their purses and in their cars so that if their friends OD on fentanyl, you can save them. Can Can you even imagine like having a commercial like that when we were growing up? This is such a huge problem. No. This year, we lost someone in our family to a fentanyl overdose and it was heartbreaking it was so sad and so to hear that like all this fentanyl is pouring over our borders through stuff like this and it's killing our citizens it's killing our young people i mean it's not 
it's not safe. We had to tell our kids, like, I understand that like weed is a thing, right? Like you go to a college party and there might be weed or you go to a bonfire. We had to tell our children, please, please never smoke any weed that you get at a party. Like, this is so important. And like, I don't advocate, like, I will be really sad to hear, like, if my kids are like smoking weed or something, but I'm not naive, okay? When our kids become 19, 20 years old, if they go to a bonfire party and there's a joint being passed around, I know that the pressure is going to be there to be like, puff, puff, pass, puff, puff, pass. Like, I'm not stupid. And we had to like literally <laughs> tell them this is no longer safe. When we were kids, it was safe. And did we do it? Yeah, sometimes maybe. I mean, it was safe within reason. Yeah, but it was safer, right? Like we didn't have to worry about fentanyl being no. laced in a little joint being passed around a bonfire. Mm -hmm. And you have to worry about that now as a young person. If you go to a college party and there's something there, you have to wonder if it's going to be the last thing you ever do mm -hmm. because of fentanyl now. Yeah. It's so scary and it's so heartbreaking and there are so many young people and there are fathers and mothers and there are children that are being left without parents because of this fentanyl epidemic and it is absolutely heartbreaking and I really wish that our government would give our resources to problems like that because we got our own problems. So if I'm hearing you right, America first? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. And if you want to come to America, you are 100% welcome. Please come, start a business, get a job, buy a home, live the American dream, have your, your beautiful family here. Do it or, legally. But do it legally, do it the right way, be respectful of our country, just as my parents were. Assimilate. Just as your grandparents were. We've got, uh, yeah, illegals beating up cops in New York. New York kind of took it on the chin on yeah, this uh, well, episode. But it's, you know, all this stuff goes hand in hand. And uh, I don't know, it's incredibly frustrating as people who are citizens of this country who have, uh, you know, devoted everything it is that we have to to pursuing our American dream and uh, wanting to raise our family here in this country and hoping that they prosper and do well and do, you know, far exceed what it is that we ever managed to do in our lifetime. And yeah, it, to see that kind of, seemingly crumble around us is is incredibly incredibly frustrating it makes me very fearful for the future if i'm being honest i'm not somebody who wants to be uh fear mongering here on this channel but it's it's the reality of things if you pay attention to it i don't know how you can come away and not be concerned yeah so, agreed um you gonna wrap this one up yeah let's do it let's go uh let's go live our own american dream i have a family movie night planned we are watching the final installment movie six episode six of anna green gables <laughs> good times Eli and Kira and actually Kaimani's even gotten into Anna Green Gables. Man, I forgot how good that was. It's I just, a vibe. I have a little, a little, so like Megan Follows, who I didn't realize is the mom of Ty in Heartland. So we geeked out on Heartland all year. We watched all the seasons oh, of Heartland. All the Heartland. They are amazing. They're so good. So you have to get past season one because it's a little rough. It was like a new show. Because it was like 2006. Yeah. And then it gets really good and it's so wholesome and it's so just like heartwarming to watch. I love the music, everything. Um, it's a vibe. It's kind of like a good, simple living video I was in gonna a way. Say, it's like it it's kinda, very similar to what it is we we try to aim for. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes I hear their songs. I'm like, oh, I want to use that in a video. <laughs> um, so I really love that. And then anyway, Megan Follows was in that show and she's Anne from Anna Green Gables. And I'm not talking about Anne with an E from Netflix or any of these remakes. No, the original Anna Green Gables. They're so good and wholesome and awesome and so we've been doing a movie night every saturday where we watch an episode of anna green gables and i'm loving it i actually bought them all so we can we can re-watch them but i've caught eli just watching anna green gables by himself several times but there's history in it and it's just so good yeah it's a good show it's i'm gonna very, go watch anna green gables very family friendly we have another busy week ahead of us we uh, do more projects to be getting done so yeah, I'm going to work on editing this and then we will uh, continue on with pursuing that American dream of ours. Yes. Love you so much, Mama. Love you too. Thank you guys for being here, watching, listening. We really appreciate you. And uh, I guess we'll see you next week here on New World Old Soul and then Saturday on Good Simple Living. All right. All right. See you guys.